Happy Friday morning, everybody. Uh, this is Chris Yost, lead pastor here at Wesley United Methodist Church. We're going to continue reading from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 10 through 19, from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, we're picking up, uh, as a reminder, yesterday we heard about Saul hearing... Um, or basically seeing the vision from God. And today, uh, remember, he was blind at the end of that story. And so today we hear the next section of that. Verse 10. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying, and he has seen a vision, in a vision, a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. I love this combination of the miraculous intervening hand of God in, a, in the tangible history of, of God's people. And I love the very real reaction of Ananias. Now, let's start off with recognizing that Ananias is, is just a disciple. Um, turns out to be a fellow who's praying. He's, he's spending time with God. But in the midst of that time, he has this vision. And sometimes we wonder, when do we know if God's talking to us or is it just our imagination? And one of the principles I try to use is, is this new information to me? Or does this sound like something I want to happen or I want to be true? Um, is this new information to me? And that's, I mean, certainly it's in the scripture here, but that's one of the reasons I would, if I was Ananias, I would believe this. This is new information, something I would not have been aware of before. Um, but Ananias is real, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> His response is, is just in our modern language, have you lost your mind, Jesus? Right? He's like, do you know what this guy Paul's doing? And I get that. Uh, I've never been called to that kind of a place, but um, there are those times in life where we know God is calling or we sense that God is calling. And uh, well, maybe our reaction is similar. God, have you lost your mind? After all, how do you think this old sailor ended up becoming your pastor? That was one another story for another day. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the real faith we see displayed and in the midst of our questions, how powerfully you continue to move. God, we thank you for Ananias' faithfulness to hear your call, to heed that call, and how the scriptures accurately tell us how they reveal his humanity and your supernatural, your, your, your uh, above explanation uh, um, interaction in his life. God, we thank you for this conversion moment of Saul, and we look forward to hearing as he becomes Paul. In Jesus' name, amen.